At the dawn of the Internet age, the world found itself standing on the precipice of a new era. The late 90s were marked by a sense of limitless possibility as the World Wide Web transformed from a novel curiosity into a global force with the potential to reshape entire industries. The dot-com bubble, as it came to be known, was a period defined as much by feverish optimism as by the cautionary tales that would eventually emerge from its ashes. To understand the dot-com burst, it's important to trace its origins, its meteoric rise, the forces at play behind the scenes, and the enduring lessons it left behind. The story begins in the mid-1990s, as the Internet shifted from the domain of academics and hobbyists to the mainstream. Suddenly, anyone with a vision and a catchy domain name could launch a business and potentially reach millions of people around the globe. Investors, eager not to miss out on the next big thing, poured unprecedented amounts of capital into startups, many of which had little more than an idea and a website. The prevailing wisdom of the time was that the Internet would disrupt every industry, leading to a gold rush mentality. If a company had .com at the end of its name, it became a magnet for speculation. Initial public offerings, IPOs, became commonplace with hundreds of Internet-based companies going public, often long before they had a viable product or even a clear path to profitability. The NASDAQ Composite Index, heavily weighted towards technology stocks, more than tripled in value between 1995 and the peak in March 2000. Stories of overnight millionaires and skyrocketing stock prices only further fueled the mania. For a time, it seemed as though the old rules of business profitability, sustainable growth, sound management, no longer applied. Venture capitalists, sensing easy money, provided funding with fewer strings attached than ever before. The barrier to entry for Internet startups was astonishingly low, and a wave of companies emerged with promises to revolutionize everything from pet supplies to grocery delivery. Many of these ventures spent lavishly on marketing and brand building, hoping to capture market share quickly and worry about the details later. The phrase, get big fast, became a mantra. But beneath the surface, cracks were forming. Many of these dot-coms had business models that didn't add up. Revenues were often an afterthought, and profits were virtually non-existent. Some companies measured success by website traffic alone, assuming that advertising dollars would follow. There was a widespread belief that being first to market was more important than being profitable, and investors, driven by fear of missing out, kept the money flowing. The media played a significant role in amplifying the hype. Tech entrepreneurs were lionized, and stories of young founders cashing in on their stock options became the stuff of legend. Television, magazines, and newspapers all contributed to an environment where skepticism was in short supply. The narrative was clear, the Internet was the future, and anyone who doubted it risked being left behind. Low interest rates and a booming economy added fuel to the fire. With money so easy to come by, investors were willing to overlook traditional financial metrics. In some cases, companies went public with little more than a business plan and a catchy name. Accounting irregularities and a lack of regulatory oversight made it difficult to separate the truly innovative from the merely speculative. Then, in early 2000, reality began to set in. Earnings reports revealed that many Internet startups were burning through cash at an unsustainable rate. High-profile failures, such as Pets.com and Webvan, exposed the flaws in business models that relied on perpetual growth without profits. Investors began to question their assumptions, and the mood shifted from exuberance to caution almost overnight. In March 2000, the Nasdaq peaked and then began a steep decline. Over the next two years, the index lost nearly 78% of its value. The collapse wiped out more than $5 trillion in market value, sending shockwaves through the global economy. Dozens of dot-com companies went bankrupt, their websites and dreams disappearing almost as quickly as they had emerged. Massive layoffs and financial losses rippled across the tech sector, and Silicon Valley, once the epicenter of optimism, became a symbol of excess and hubris. The fallout was swift and severe. Entire industries felt the impact, and the United States entered a recession in the early 2000s. Investors, 
once eager to buy into any company with a dot-com domain, became far more cautious. For a time, skepticism about Internet-based businesses prevailed, and the survivors had to prove their worth through real profits and sustainable growth. Yet, not all was lost in the wreckage. The dot-com burst served as a crucible for innovation, forcing companies to adapt or perish. Giants like Amazon and Google, which had managed their finances carefully and built strong business models, not only survived but thrived in the aftermath. They emerged as leaders, setting new standards for what was possible in the digital age. The dot-com bubble was not the first speculative mania in history, nor would it be the last. Comparisons have often been made to other financial bubbles, such as the housing crisis of 2008 or the more recent surges and corrections in the cryptocurrency market. In each case, the core dynamics are strikingly similar. A revolutionary new technology or financial product captures the public's imagination, easy money floods into the market, and valuations soar far beyond any rational basis. When the underlying fundamentals fail to support the hype, the bubble bursts, leaving behind a mixture of innovation, loss, and hard-won wisdom. Looking back, several key lessons emerge from the dot-com burst. First and foremost, profits matter. No amount of hype or visionary rhetoric can substitute for a business model that generates sustainable revenue and profit. The market eventually demands results, and companies that fail to deliver are unlikely to survive in the long run. Second, diversification is critical for investors. Those who concentrated their portfolios in Internet stocks during the bubble often suffered devastating losses. By spreading risk across different sectors and asset classes, investors can better weather the inevitable ups and downs of the market. Third, technological shifts are real, but timing and valuation are everything. The Internet did indeed transform the world, just not as quickly or in the ways that many had imagined during the bubble years. Understanding when to invest and at what price remains a crucial skill for anyone looking to profit from innovation. Finally, the dot-com burst reminds us of the dangers of groupthink and media-driven hype. When everyone is saying the same thing and caution is thrown to the wind, it's often a signal to step back and reassess. The best investors and entrepreneurs are those who can see beyond the prevailing narrative and focus on fundamentals. In the years since the dot-com burst, the technology sector has continued to innovate at a breathtaking pace. Social media, cloud computing, mobile devices, and artificial intelligence have all emerged as major forces each with their own cycles of excitement and skepticism. The lessons of the late 90s, however, remain as relevant as ever. Success in the digital age requires more than a good idea and a clever name. It demands discipline, resilience, and a willingness to learn from the past. The dot-com burst was a defining moment for an entire generation of investors, entrepreneurs, and technologists. It marked the end of an era of unbridled optimism and the beginning of a more mature, measured approach to the opportunities and challenges of the Internet age. In its wake, the survivors rebuilt stronger, smarter, and better prepared for the uncertainties of the future. And as new bubbles form and burst in the decades to come, the story of the dot-com bubble will continue to serve as both a warning and a beacon of hope for those who dare to dream big in the digital world.